Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining me today. So this is your induction from Gina Conway Academy. Just to give you an overview, um, so we're doing things slightly different this time. Um, we're doing our induction uh, as a video, so you can um, get some information about the course um, and hopefully um, get a better understanding of uh, what we're all about. Um, so just to give you an overview, um, We'll do a bit of a welcome, um, give you an overview on the course and the qualifications attached. Uh, we will look at your hairdressing kit as well as the Academy Rota, so the weekly Rota that you'll be doing, as well as your timetable for the day. We will look into uh, the TreatWell app and how that works. Um, We'll be discussing the COVID-19 measures, um, the, the new normal. Um, we'll look at uh, career progression, um, as well as how to use some of the demo sheets, um, as well as how to log your 20% of the job training if you're doing an apprenticeship. Um, so our mission is to, um, so our mission is uh, to deliver outstanding, conscientious and ethically aware training to future generations with a strong focus on customer service and environmental leadership through the use of products, tools and behaviours. So um, the Academy um, opened in the start of 2018. Um, the reason for this, we wanted to combine um, Gina Conway's salon uh, in-house training programme um, but attach it to a recognised qualification and also attach it to um, an apprenticeship. So we wanted to kind of put bundle them all in together. Um, so we actually do training on behalf of change training for apprenticeships, um, as well as our own uh, private courses um, for level twos. Um, so um, our values that go alongside our mission is about equality so that we uh, do respect and be kind to one another uh, environmental, we're very passionate about the environment and in, in protecting our planet. Uh, encouragement, we want to ensure that we can give um, the very best support and, and nurture every individual to ensure that they achieve their very best um, and employability. Um, so it's not just a case of just getting a qualification um, through this or passing your, your apprenticeship. It's, it's to make sure that you're leave, um, leaving us uh, ready to be work ready to, to go onto the salon floor. Um, so again, just a little bit about who we are. So we are Gina Conway Academy. Uh, we offer the private courses. So if you come under uh, us as a private learner, um, uh, there's somebody called Sitting Guilds, and they're the people who make the qualifications. Uh, they, they're here to off ball, so they need to make sure off ball we need to check that Sitting Guilds are doing their job properly. Um, and then so therefore City Guilds will make some remote visits and uh, to, to check up on the assessment process and the quality systems that we have in place in the Academy. Um, so, so they'll sometimes come along. Um, if you are uh, doing an apprenticeship route, um, your funding comes partly from your employer. Also, um, a bit of the most of it comes from the government. So the SFA, um, who, who this logo is here, the SFA, um, uh, they, they do the funding and they all need to make sure everything's in place. So they'll sometimes do interviews with yourself. They'll also need to ensure that you're meeting 20% of the job training. Um, they'll check that the paperwork was all in place. So there's lots of paperwork that we do during the sign up process. This is all to meet the SFA requirements. Um, and then we also have Ofsted. So obviously they go into schools, they go into training providers, as well as um, FE, further education colleges, uh, again, to make sure that we're doing our, our job properly. So um, in that case, they'll, they'll go to chains and chain training will come to us. So um, say if you're doing an apprenticeship route, you'll, you are technically change training learners and we deliver on their behalf. So location wise, where we are, so we are, literally just a few minutes away from Wimbledon Station. So Wimbledon Station being here, as you come over the road, you've got a Pret on uh, right opposite, and then you've got a Starbucks is here. Uh, we're located within um, Ely's uh, department store. So the front entrance is here. So it's called Ely's Urban Beauty. Um, and that's where you've got um, Mac 
uh, uh, leaders, a few other sort of products, uh, product companies. And then at the very back, you'll find the academy, which is up, up the stairs. Um, the entrance we will use um, as, uh, as students is going to be here. Um, and it's just next to um, the main department store is here from the other side. And our entrance is just, just located behind this white van. Um, so ED staff uh, entrance is there. Uh, you'll be given a code it, to get into the building. So we'll organise that with Melissa, who's our HR manager. Um, and when you come there, you'll get a security uh, security guard meet you. Uh, and that's where they'll take your temperature upon arrival. Um, so yeah, do use this map to help you um, with, with getting into the building the first couple of times. Um, obviously, we're going to do. I'll be doing a tour with you, so I'll be meeting you outside um, there anyway, just to give you a run through of, of where we are. Then once you get inside, this is um, a, a photo of our academy um, in action. These are all of our apprentices uh, all busy working on their models. Um, because it is a busy session, we've got two stylists, sorry, not two stylists, but two educators um, running this. Um, so you say it's, it's, it's a lovely salon, it's a really, really great academy. Um, and so this is, these are all of our learners in action. Uh, and then just to give you an overview of the course structure itself. So first of all, we're going to look at the NDQ level two. So these are for our private learners who are going through the non-apprenticeship route. Um, it's a 13 month program, technically 12, but because we close the month of December, so it's going to be sort of 12 to 13 months. Um, it's broken down into three stages. So stage one um, being the first three months where we're looking at doing a one length above and below shoulder. Our colours are going to be regrowth tints, a quasi or a demi tint and a full head permanent tint. Um, and our styling, we're going to be looking at our blow dries. That's going to be our smooth volume and our curly. Um, our pin curl setting and the use of straightening irons. Um, our pin curl setting we will use as on base um, barrel curls that will be part of our curly blow dry. And um, when I come on to the apprenticeship route as well, you'll notice that stage one is the same. So. It's going to be our more basic um, cuts um, and colours and styling. Once, once you've learned those and you've passed those assessments in there, so to bear in mind, you've got lots of little assessments. And if you're doing the MVQ route, you only got small assessments only. So there's no final assessment at the end um, on, on, this, on this course. Um, so once you've uh, completed those from stage one, you'll then move on to stage two, which is the next three to six months. And that's when we're going to move on to our different types of layers that there are, and that also includes some full graduation. Um, our colours, um, that's when you start doing your woven highlights um, and your tint with a few foils. So that would be, you know, maybe introducing some highlights to the hair. We're doing a global colour over the rest of it, or maybe, you know, a regrowth tint with a few foils in there. Um, styling wise, we then move on to our different types of set. So that's wet and dry setting. Um, and that's going to be using the section patterns of our directional and our brick wind. Um, you're going to be then introduced to doing some hair up training as well as using curling tongs. Um, so to bear in mind as well, stage two will be the same in the apprenticeship route as it is in the Q route. And then finally, we have stage three, which is the last six to 12 months where we're going to be looking at different shorter haircuts, including scissor over comb. Um, and again, perfecting our woven highlights and also looking at some sliced highlights. Um, that's where you'll get a bit quicker, um, get a bit better with your um, application as well as your product choice. Um, and then styling wise, we're looking at hair up and then using some added hair. So this is not hair extensions, but this is just maybe adding a bit of length to the hair um, or you're doing the hair up and you need a bit more additional hair to add to it. We can look at some of that. Your NVQ level two consists of eight different units, ranging from 201 to 207. And then we have 209 as our perming and neutralizing hair. And look at 201 is our blow drying, 202 is our setting and our hair up. Uh, three is our cutting hair, four is our color, five is our concentration unit, six is shampooing the hair, and seven is developing and maintaining your effectiveness at work. For all these units, you've got a variety of practical assessments and as well as every unit will have a knowledge test which you need to complete um, to, in order to ensure that unit is, is signed off. 
moving on to the apprenticeship route, so our course structure. So our stages, um, if you notice here, they've got an additional stage four and the length of time for the apprenticeship is longer. The reason being is as part of an apprenticeship, you now have an in-point assessment. Uh, these came into play around 2017, 2018, um, and these were across all apprenticeships uh, across the board. So in you know, construction industry, hairdressing, beauty therapy, um, the, the apprenticeship standards replaced the old previous NBQs uh, that were in the old apprenticeship framework. Um, so we've got a little bit longer to ensure that you're getting ready for a final endpoint assessment, um, which is in our sector in hairdressing, a trade test. Um, we're going to look at this in a future slide. Um, but in this one, um, sorry, also just to, to remember, you also have maths and English attached to anyone that's doing an apprenticeship. You didn't achieve those um, those grades at school. Um, and you've also got a little bit more paperwork because of, um, say, you are government funded. So we have to demonstrate um, auditing compliance to them. So it's a little bit longer, this route. Um, and obviously, bear in mind, you're also working. So the first um, zero to four months is going to be the same, famous stage one as before, looking at our basic cuts, colours and styling. Stage two is exactly the same as I mentioned before, looking at four to eight months. And that's looking at different types of layers for our cuts, introducing our woven highlights. Stage three is going to be our eight to 16 month where we're working on short hair, scissor over comb. With, with our stage three in our apprenticeships, we will be looking at restyles. Um, there's no difference to how we teach restyles because um, a cut, we're going to show you all the different um, approaches of cutting hair. It doesn't matter if you take an inch off or seven inches off. It's, it's the same thing. But there is a unit, um, part of the styling unit, sorry, part of the cutting unit on the apprenticeship route where you do need to do a couple of restyles. Um, for colour, we will then be doing our woven highlights and our sliced highlights as, um, and as well as some hair up. Stage four is all about our preparation for our endpoint assessment. Um, it's going to get you working on the salon floor being a little bit quicker. Um, it's getting you practicing so for, for mock EPA, um, EPA being endpoint assessment um, assessments. Uh, I also work for City and Guilds. Um, as an independent endpoint assessor, so I have a lot of, um, sort of first-hand uh, information um, uh, and experience with with, um, with endpoint assessments, so I can help ensure that you're fully ready um, when it comes to the endpoint assessment. Um, the endpoint assessment itself is done by an independent endpoint assessor, so that will not be me, and it won't be your assessor, or it won't be your employer, it'll be somebody you've never met before, and they, they're completely independent. Um, whilst we're still sticking on the apprenticeship route, um, much like the NVQ we looked at um, with, with our private learners, you also have a qualification attached. This one's slightly different, um, slightly less units, but the units are, are a bit bigger um, than the NVQ. Um, and these also work from consultation, shampooing, cutting, uh, styling and colour. Um, the difference is, so say for instance here, the styling can combine styling hair up, they're, they're all in one unit. And then you then choose your optional unit between either perming, relaxing hair or hair extensions. Um, do bear in mind, if you do want to go down the hair extension services route, you'll need to do this with your employer and their consent. But do think of um, the cost attached to the hair, et cetera, these kind of things. So we genuinely recommend the perming, but obviously that, that discussion um, would, would be between yourself, your employer and us, um, uh, at the academy. So, when it comes to the tests, as I mentioned before um, in this in the other slides, um, every unit you have a, a mixture of practical and knowledge tests. Um, so, for instance, every one of these units, there'll be a knowledge test attached to these as well. But before you sit those, there's a cross unit knowledge test which looks at your health and safety. So, for this unit, you must achieve 100% in order to pass. Every other unit is 70%, but health and safety you must achieve 100. That being said, within your exam itself, if you achieve over 70, the rest of those questions can be made by all questions. Um, below 70% would be an instant fail and you have to reset the whole thing. Um, with, with, with these it tests, if you fail, um, it's a reset. There's no, it's not like a final, final test. So there is an opportunity to reset that. 
Um, but for your other exams, it's going to be a roughly a 70% pass mark, depending on the number of questions. When it comes to doing assessments for your practical on programme, so not your endpoint assessment, your on programme, and this is across the board for everybody, um, your service times are flexible. So if you would take four hours to do one length haircut, obviously that's not a realistic working time. However, if you've got someone with very thick, abundant hair, you may need a little bit longer on that assessment than somebody with who is working on finer hair. So you do agree your service times at the beginning uh, with your assessor before you get started. Um, all assessments must be carried out in a realistic work environment and simulation is not allowed with any part of this qualification. So this means things like role play um, you, can't, you can't use. Witness testimonies um, from your employers, for an, as an example, can only be used uh, if there is enough assessment evidence in place. So as an example, uh, you're doing the cutting unit and you've got six observations, which means you must be observed at least six times by a qualified assessor. So you've been observed six times, but you may be missing scissor of a comb or you've not done one of the layered haircuts. At that point, you can then use a witness testimony or a witness statement. At no point can they replace the work of any observation from a qualified assessor. Um, we have obviously qualified assessors that are our tutors that work for the centre. So Alex um, or Fidel, I believe, would be your, your assessor uh, at the academy. Um, it is your responsibility to find your own models. However, we do um, provide um, them for you as part of your own programme. Um, but this is anyone that's doing an apprenticeship who would have an endpoint assessment attached to it, um, that would come down to yourself to find the model. The reason being is you don't, you want your model to obviously turn up on the day. So it's very important that if somebody, if you do know that person, obviously play the game on the day, you can't be too over, over familiar with them, but you have to ensure that they are gonna, going to attend. Um, so this is for the apprenticeship route only. As I mentioned before, there is an endpoint assessment and this is that endpoint assessment. That final assessment is either marked fail, pass or distinction. And on the day you'll need to do a haircut, which is a restyle. And that must have at least three different cutting techniques used. So that may be freehand, um, cutting, um, <clears throat> uh, texturizing. These could be the different types of um, cutting techniques. It must change shape. So it doesn't necessarily have to change length. There has to be a visible change of shape noticeable as part of your restyle. Um, you also need to do a blow dry and a hair up on the day. So maybe that you choose to do your blow dry, which has to be above shoulder on your restyle. Um, and you can do your other blow dry on your long hair client. You could then maybe even do a, a set at the same time. So you could do like a curly blow dry, set it with pink bell clips and then do a hair up. You also need to do a colour and lighting service on the day and which changes depth and tone. And this must include woven highlights and one of colouring technique. So you may just decide to do keep it simple and do like a T-section of foils on the head because that's the absolute minimum. And you then may choose to use a toner afterwards to change the depth and tone. Um, or you may decide to do uh, foils um, with an ELC or something in it and then do an all over colour in between. Um, so this is obviously a way off. Um, and we, there is a separate video on how to prepare for an assessment and obviously we will be training you for this. Um, again, this is only um, applicable to anyone that's doing an apprenticeship. Um, on that apprenticeship note, if in order for you to sit this endpoint assessment into, into the gateway, you have had to have had to achieve your Air Professional Level 2 qualification, what we looked at a moment ago, your functional skills have achieved level one or hold a three to nine or in previous DCSE grades in A to E, um, you would have to have attempted your level two functional skills or achieved your uh, four to nine or in old GCSE terms that was A to C. And again, before we can put you into the uh, gateway, you must have had evidence your 20% of the job training. I'm gonna show you how to evidence that a little bit later on um in this in this presentation um hairdressing kit so you need to ensure you have these this kit ready to start your course this involves one cutting comb one pintail comb or you, you may choose to use a tail comb 
you need at least six section clips I recommend getting more because they often go missing it's a bit like horses and pens um one dim and flat brush which you can see there and then three to four heat retainer brushes varying in size these are your round brushes you'll also need scissors uh, i recommend for the scissors not to spend too much money i wouldn't go above the 30 pound mark um, whilst you're doing your training um obviously scissors well, it's hundreds of pounds so keep it um, a bit cheaper while you're training um a back brush comb uh, a pack of pink oil clips a training head with clamp and they, they tend to all come with clamps anyway this is for you to practice at home as well as a paddle brush um, which you can see in the bottom left hand corner um electrical equipment we provide uh, at the academy but to use whilst you're there but obviously if you're in a salon you may need electrical equipment to use there or if you're at home you're definitely obviously going to need hair dryers um straighten lines those kind of things so electrical equipment we provide you don't need to bring along with you um but if you're going to practice at home obviously then you'll need it but this is the kit you must have and you will need to bring this with you to the academy on a monday uh, you will see a, a rotor which will look very similar to this and you'll also be told which group you're in so here we've got groups a to d and then down the left hand side we've got the date um, so you'll see every week what you're doing, the location you're in, and what um, and um, who you'll be with. Um, so, for instance, here we can see Group C are going to be starting in um, the month of October with um, their educator, and that's where they're going to be a demonstration and practice using a flat brush and round brush. Okay. Um, when you start off, so this would be most people. I'm speaking to now, are even being Group C or Group D. Um, you would, um, so Group C, we can see here, for instance, they're going to start off with lots of demos and practicing on the block before they move on to people. Usually we say about a month. Um, however, if you feel confident and ready and, and you may be already in a salon or you've got quite a bit of experience, if you're ready to start a model, so we can have a discussion about starting a bit earlier. Um, so this is what your rotor will look like. You'll be receiving this at the very beginning of the course when you start. Um, you'll also be receiving a timetable. So this is a 9.30 start and finishing at 5.30. 9.30 start, your arrival to your cleaning and sterilising your workstation. Model number one starts at either 10 o'clock or 10.15, depending on what you put in. So we always have colours come in for 10, cuts come in for 10.15, so they're slightly staggered. You then have time to clean up and sterilise before you take your half an hour lunch. Lunch, I strongly recommend that you bring in lunch with you because there's not really the time to go out and get it, eat it and come back. So um, do do your pack up. Um, you'll then start your model two. And again, colours for 130, cuts for 145. Um, you'll then uh, clean up and sterilise and then you'll receive your feedback from your tutor roughly around the 430 mark. Um, and this is where they'll give you a feedback and do any recordings in your portfolios if you are competent within your assessment. It's also time for you to check your portfolio, make sure you're up to date and check that your targets are all in place, this kind of thing. Um, and then for a 5.30 finish. Um, we use the TreatWell app um, to book our appointments. Um, so uh, models can go via our Academy uh, website or uh, Facebook or Instagram um, and book in um, but you'll need to have access to this so go to your app store and download Treat Well Connect um, and if you can email me brad at ginaconway.co.uk um, your email address so I can get you a login and then you'll receive a, a, an email from Treat Well asking you to log in and, and you'll have access to this um, obviously you only have access for your own clients and your own models um, but if you need to put anybody in, you can then do that. Do bear in mind, uh, because of track and trace, we need all that information now anyway. Um, but this is an important app because if it, you'll be able to see who's coming in on the day. Um, do bear in mind, it's not set in stone, so you may not have anybody maybe showing in the morning, but someone could be off sick or um, we may have had to need to change our appointments around. Um, so don't think, oh, I've not got a ten o'clock I'm not going to come in. You'll still be coming in. Um, obviously, it may be that we've got your exams through their day or other things. So um, it's only a guide, but do do make sure that you're checking that so you're ready to, to start your day. Um, the new world we live in with our 
uh, COVID-19 measures. So for stylists, you must wear a visor and a grade two mask. And grade two masks are the ones you can see here in the picture. And the clients must all wear a face mask and they'll need to ensure that face mask is on when they enter the building. Um, for the COVID-19 measures, you will be sent out uh, a policy on, on this, but just to go over the basics now, um, you arrive at the back of the Ely staff entrance, as I showed you earlier, for a 9.30 start. Um, use a hand sanitizer and have a, your, your temperature will be taken by security. Uh, ensure you maintain a social distance while you're working for, whilst you're walking through the shop and salon. Um, and if you do use public transport to get to us at the academy, um, make sure you've got a change of clothes for when you get in to see us. So I'd recommend wearing something simple and easy for, the, for, the, for your uh, journey in, and then you can get changed into your black uh, for when you start with us. Um, there are evaded bags behind reception if you don't have a bag with you, um, but make sure you just use your own bags for that. Um, you'll then wash your hands or so for 20 seconds after changing and then you'll be putting on your mask, apron and face guard. Um, do have your appointment sheet ready for the day so you know what lays ahead of you. Um, you will only have one workstation to work throughout the day so you can't move workstations once you go to somewhere that's where you're going to be for the rest of the day. For that reason you can't afford to get behind so we have given you quite a lot of time to get the models done and for cleanup time but if there's, a, if there's a moment you feel like you may be running behind you must let your tutor know. Uh, you'll then clean your workstation to prepare for your first model, um, uh, have sure that your equipment is all set up and ready. Um, you'll greet your model, ask them to, uh, politely to make sure that their mask is on. Once their mask is on you'll then do a temperature check on them um, and then if that's all okay we'll, you'll then escort them over to the chair um, we do have a guide for you as well to look at for temperatures. Um, and then once it's done, clean your workstation and chair between each and every model. So we've got a slightly different way of delivering now, whereas in the past, the first hour was spent the theory, you now complete knowledge packs. Um, so this has actually been great for us because it, it means that we can fit much more into the day um, and your knowledge packs would be done um, on, on a Monday. Um, they'll be rotated in, so you'll have sort of an online um, theory session class with myself. Um, and then after that, you'll go and read through the packs, the packs of handouts. So here's an example from the shampooing one here. And then you've also got worksheets. Um, so this will be all your knowledge and what you'll need for um, your, your exam tests at the end of each unit. And again, those of you that are doing an apprenticeship, um, you'll also have a knowledge test within that as well. So this is all everything you need to know about those. Um, to give additional flexibility, we've just recently um, added the Gina Conway Academy YouTube account. Um, please click and subscribe because obviously we have not got many uh, people added as yet. Um, this was done during lockdown. It was just, um, it's actually myself just doing some haircuts, uh, which meets the, the qualification um, that you need to be assessed on. So it's, it's kind of like some useful how-to guide. So it's it's a lot of the demos that we've done for in the academy. So it gives you a chance to see, um, you can look back and reflect on how to do these different types of cuts within the course. Um, could be useful for your employers because they, if they want to see how we're training you to cut, this is how we do it. Um, obviously do bear in mind if you are doing training as an apprenticeship elsewhere, um, we would never say to you that that way of cutting is wrong. Um, or our way of cutting is wrong. There's, there's lots of different varieties of ways of cutting, it's just depending on how it will deliver that information. Um, when you're being assessed, as long as you're meeting the performance criteria, um, that's all we assess you against. We would never say, oh, we didn't show you this way, so it's a fail, as an example. So, so from a long distance learning point of view here, you've got some knowledge packs that you can, you can take away with you, um, as well as training videos on our YouTube. Um, in addition to that, we also created a cutting guide um, so, so some information on the different types of haircuts and step-by-steps, um, all the info you need to know um, as part of our Academy Handbook. And, and the different types of career pathways out there. So just so you know, obviously you could start off as an assistant or you may skip to do that and you may just go straight to a stylist if you've done a course, um, for instance, like with us. You then might build up some experience as a stylist and decide you might want to go and work into the art team. Uh, we've got some slides in a minute of some of our the Gina Conway uh, team uh, art team. Um, you may 
decide to then go into fashion and photographic work. Um, you may choose to go into doing media makeup and media hair, working on sets. Uh, you may go into education. So it's obviously head down more my route that I went down. Um, obviously, so you can stick with the stylist route. Lots of people do um, a great career being a stylist. Um, private works, so you could go to people's houses and do hair that way. Um, you may decide to manage a salon, be a salon owner. So there's there's a big um, variety of different, different work out there. Um, safeguarding. So um, we have a safeguarding lead, uh, Melissa, at the Academy. So if there's any issues or concerns, you always go straight to Melissa with any safeguarding concerns. Safeguarding is in place um, to protect any young people who may be vulnerable. Um, and it's also there to prevent harm to a young person's development or health. Um, or it's also there to um, enable young people to have um, uh, optimum life uh, chances. Um, so the, we have a safeguarding workbook that you'll be completing if you're doing an apprenticeship um, from Chains and that gives you some, some information um, and uh, advice and guidance on that. As I say, Melissa is our safeguarding lead at the Academy and she's often in the Academy on a Monday, but her email address is, is up there. Um, and you also got if you, any other concerns if you're, if you're doing an apprenticeship route, um, He's also our safeguarding lead at Change Training. Quality and diversity, very important to us. Um, I'll let you to read through this slide, but um, it's very important that everyone's treated fairly and equally, and something we're very passionate about. Um, and then here's just some examples of some of the some of the awards that we've won at Gina Conway, um, as well as some of the, the show work that we've done. Here's an example from Sun International recently. Um, some of the uh, Merton Business Awards, um, some of the work we've done with the community with Haircuts for the Homeless, um, Water Aid. So we like to really get involved um, and do our bit for, for personal development. Um, if you are going to be doing any demos in, not, not you doing the demos, if you will be observing any demos within the academy, um, you'll be seeing these head sheets. This is a completed version to sort of show you an example. Uh, yours will be blank. We would recommend getting a pen with three different colours, one green, which would show you the section patterns, um, red to help you draw your cutting angles, and then blue to show you can do your outline shape. Um, and there's some little boxes here that you can fill in for some top tips or some do's and don'ts. Um, you may find this useful. Um, and then some train targets here. So you may decide that you want your tweet on that day to say, you know, I, um, I'd like to use more methodical uh, sections because um, my section is a bit messy when I'm working. So you can put this on there and this will help your tutor on the day to identify your, your own personal targets. <clears throat> Speaking on the target uh, front, so you'll be completing these roughly every month. Um, and this is what you'll be writing down, um, what you need to work on. So maybe for instance, um, you see you've got your units at the top here, your unit names from your qualification. Maybe that shampoo is something you're quite confident in and you're like, actually, I want to get all my assessments done on that now. So you can write down, you know, the, the amount of assessments you'd like to do on that. Um, it may be that you've got cutting on there and you're like, actually, I'm not ready for my one length yet. I'd like to practice on this. I'd like to do this. I've got this YouTube video on this and all these kind of things. Um, so these are all your training targets of short term targets that you want to achieve. Um, we, we all do this um, every month, every learner. Um, if you are doing an apprenticeship, you must do this as part of the funding rules. Um, but it's obviously useful for everybody to, to keep you on track. And then as the apprenticeship route only, um, you must complete 20% off the job training and have recorded these hours down in order to sit your gateway and, and also in order to be eligible for an apprenticeship. Um, so we can show you how to do these when, you, when you're in, but here would be the number of weeks in training. So maybe this would be week one. You write here how many hours a week, so it could be 40 hours a week you do in the salon. Bear in mind, um, your training day, if you're doing an apprenticeship, is with us. So you don't do five days a week, you would do four days a week uh, in the salon and your fifth day with us at the academy. It's a paid day from work. Um, obviously, for that reason, if you're late, um, we do need to let your boss know, and it's the same as if, if you're sick or anything as well. Um, so you need to ensure that if you are off ill, that you let your employer know as well as us. Um, and we will be obviously doing the same. 
But here with the number of weeks will be down that you're doing, how many hours you're doing. So you may put here, for instance, practical training at the academy. So you might be done, right, well, I've done seven hours today there. And I did some, I watched some of the videos. So I put one down here. So that might be eight hours in total. You then divide it here and that will give you a percentage for that week. Um, so that will show you how many hours you've done, but you'll also need to calculate, um, sorry, not calculate, you'll also need to evidence this. So you, we, we've got little diaries that you write in, reflective logs, and um, that's where you evidence, say, you know, I watched this video, or I, I watched this stylist do this in the salon, or I practiced this, and you, you have a little reflective account of what you've done. So lots of, lots of information there. Um, obviously, any questions that you do have, um, do let me know. But um, hopefully there's, that, that's, um, that's been useful today to give you a bit more information on the course. Um, let's say the, the qualifications that you're doing, the endpoint assessment, if you're in an apprenticeship doing it that route. Um, obviously, you know how to get to us. And um, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.